Uh, today I would like to talk about the different uh, phases in a plant pathology study. Uh, like any other uh, scientific uh, study, uh, plant pathology study is always very well organized and done in a very precise manner in which we take uh, small steps and these ste small steps uh, lead us to a conclusion and uh, through that conclusion we are able to manage the plant disease. Uh, you uh, definitely come across uh, many plants uh, in past or in recent time which are showing different kind of symptoms. Uh, we all know that uh, plants are only show the symptoms when their physiology is disturbed and uh, their physiology is uh, disturbed by both uh, biotic as well as a biotic factor suppose someone from your family come up with these leaves or with these berries and ask you uh, whether uh, the plant is diseased uh, or whether the plant is not diseased at least uh, at this point you can say it is diseased because it is showing the symptoms but just by looking the symptom you can never reach the conclusion whether it is due to some uh, biotic factor or whether it is due to some abiotic factor unless uh, you have a past experience of working on these diseases so you uh, organize your study or uh, and in this study the first step uh, is no is to know what is the cause of the so knowing the cause of the disease in plant pathology is called the etiology so etiology represent the first phase of any plant pathology study so in that case uh, the thing which is under the investigation is either a diseased plant or its part so the basic question first uh, we want to answer uh, to reach out the cause of the disease whether this disease is due to some abiotic factor or it is due to some biotic factor uh, because the symptom uh, are confusing or uh, most of the time intermingle uh, in the coming months uh, you will see when the temperature is more the plants become wilted and why the plants become wilted uh, the one reason is that the rate of evapotranspiration is more than the rate of absorption of water from the soil and when this rate is more the plant become wilted but the other on the other hand there are the fungi and the bacteria which has the capability to block the xylem tissue and so that water cannot travel from the soil to the top portion of the plant and the plant again showing wilting symptom if such kind of thing uh, occur one uh, one easiest way is to provide water uh, to the plant if the what uh, if the plant is recovered it means uh, this wilting is temporary and it is due to some kind of environmental factor which could be a high temperature or which uh, could be a uh, deficient supply of water but if the plant is not recovered even after uh, water is provided then it is due to some kind of pathological factor which could be a fungi or which could be a bacteria so uh, this might be easy and it can be performed in the field but most of the times uh, it is too confusing and just by looking the plants uh, we cannot judge whether it is due to some abiotic factor or whether it is due to some kind of biotic factor for example uh, when the plant uh, uh, when there are nutrient deficiencies the plant showing uh, almost similar symptoms as uh, when they are under the attack of the viruses so most of the time uh, it is confused there are the times when uh, we can easily differentiate uh, the the disease is due to some kind of uh, pathogen 
on the basis of signs if you look at the screen uh, you can by just looking you can say that the infected uh, oranges or is actually due to the some kind of fungi which is producing a white olive color mycelium so in that case when you see the sign the diagnostic is easy but it is very rare uh, in uh, plant disease study that you can see the sign most of the time uh, we take the decision by just looking the uh, and when uh, we make the decision on the basis of the symptom it is always tricky so how can uh, we reach out uh, uh, the uh, reach out what is the exact cause of the disease uh, is one way uh, to cut the disease portion and you actually perform in your last semester where the students brought uh, the disease uh, sample and we cut down the disease portion and then put it on the culture media mm -hmm. and uh, uh, and saw whether it is uh, whether it there is a some kind of microbial growth or not and if there is a microbial growth whether it is a bacteria or whether it is a fungi so this help us to conclude uh, that this disease is due to a fungi or due to a bacteria always remember that the pathogens uh, which are necrotroph or the hemibiotroph they can grow on the culture media necrotroph are those pathogen which first kill the host and then live on it while the hemibiotroph are those which first live in the living uh, uh, tissue or a living plant and then kill it and then live on it most of the fungi and the bacteria belong to these two categories uh, uh, either they are necrotroph or they are hemibiotroph but still there are the pathogen such as uh, all of the viruses or such as the rust fungi these are the fungi which are biotroph mean that they can't live outside their host so if they can't live outside the their host we can't grow them on the media so how we can know that this disease is caused by a virus or some biotroph fungi we have we need to adopt a different strategy and in this strategy uh, in case of viruses we extract the sap from the infected plant and then rub it on the healthy plant of the same species if the disease is developed it means uh, the symptom uh, the infected plant showing initially is actually due to some viral infection while in case of biotrophic uh, fungi such as rust uh, we collect the spores and then spray them on the plants of the same species and if the disease is developed we can conclude that this is due to uh, some kind of biotrophic fungi in the in recent times uh, along with this strategy there are new techniques also uh, come in molecular plant pathology where people use the enzyme linked immunoabsorbent assays or uh, polymerase chain reaction in order to reach out what is the cause of the disease because without knowing uh, the cause of the disease we cannot proceed further so uh, the thing is that even if we know what is the cause of the disease suppose uh, the cause of the disease of the fungi then the next question uh, might be uh, we have to answer whether uh, this fungi belong to lower or the higher uh, fungi group uh, uh, and this can be done uh, by making the slide if the septa is present then uh, it belongs to higher fungi if the septa uh, is not present in the hyphae it means it belong to lower fungi so if it is a higher fungi still uh, it could be uh, ascomycete or it could be belong to basidiomycetes so in order to answer this query 
uh, we need to interrogate uh, more and uh, on the basis of the presence of ascus or the basidium or the basidiospore or the ascospore we can finally say that this uh, fungi belong to uh, ascomycete or the basidiomycete and then uh, further uh, investigation is done uh, if it is a basidiomycete uh, what family order genus or species it, it belongs so uh, if you see that it is a very stepwise uh, investigation and all the care uh, is taken so that uh, we not reach to the wrong conclusion and uh, we exactly reach uh, what is the cause of the disease uh, because it is very much important this is not important in plant pathology uh, it is also important in human and animal pathology because if we don't know the cause of the disease we cannot manage or control the disease uh, for example if the plant is suffering from some kind of viral infection and uh, you wrongly uh, concluded that it is infected by fungi or a bacteria uh, and you uh, applying some kind of fungicide or antibiotic it will not work because the cause is not the fungi or a bacteria the cause is the virus so knowing exactly what is the cause uh, can lead us to manage the uh, plant disease uh, for me uh, the uh, knowing of the cause disease is uh, is just like a foundation stone on which the whole building of uh, a plant pathology study is built if uh, the foundation stone is not good then uh, no matter how big the building is how lavish the building is one day it has to collapse and all the efforts of the year will be gone so uh, we must be very precise uh, very logical and very careful when we uh, when we are detecting uh, the cause of the disease i hope uh, this presentation uh, just give you a glimpse on the importance of the cause of the disease and uh, how it can be done uh, in the coming uh, presentation uh, we would like to discuss the other phases of the plant pathology study but these phases cannot cannot proceed if we don't know the cause of the disease or uh, in plant pathology it is referred as etiology